Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to Tree of Life Lutheran Church on this Trinity Sunday. We also welcome those of you who are worshiping with us online this morning. The Trinity reminds us of God's tremendous love for us as each person in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, played an important role in our salvation. We will review that Trinity and the roles that each person played, as well as thanking and praising God for our salvation. May God bless us as we worship him together this morning. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Father has been merciful to us and has given his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In joy, we turn to the hymn response on the top of page 5.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, dwelling in majesty and mystery, filling and renewing all creation by your eternal spirit, and manifesting your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, in mercy cleanse our hearts and lips, that free from doubt and fear, we may ever worship you, one true immortal God, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, living and reigning now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture lesson for Trinity Sunday was recorded by Isaiah in chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Here we see the wonderful works of God in his plan of salvation. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. This is God's word. Continue with our anthem for today, the song of praise, I Will Rise.
second lesson this morning also serves as our sermon text from the Epistle of Paul to the Romans in chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, shows the interworking of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our salvation. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children, that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Alleluia. Please stand for our gospel lesson. <coughs> the gospel lesson for Trinity Sunday is recorded in John chapter 3, the first 17 verses. In these verses, Jesus speaks with Nicodemus about what is required for someone to enter heaven. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is God's Word. On Trinity Sunday, we turn to the third of the three major Christian creeds, the Athanasian Creed. Because of its length, you may be seated as we make our confession of faith this morning. Whoever wishes to be saved must, above all else, hold to the true Christian faith. Whoever does not keep this faith pure in all points will certainly perish forever. Now this is the true Christian faith. We worship one God in three persons and three persons in one God. Without mixing the persons or dividing the divine being. For each person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is distinct. But the deity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, and co-eternal in majesty. What the Father is, so is the Son, and so is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father is infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father is eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. Yet they are not three who are eternal, but there is one who is eternal, just as they are not three who are uncreated, nor three who are infinite, but there is one who is uncreated and one who is infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, the Holy Spirit is almighty. Yet they are not three who are almighty, 
but there is one who is almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, yet they are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord, yet they are not three lords, but one Lord. For just as Christian truth compels us to confess each person individually to be God and Lord, so the true Christian faith forbids us to speak of three gods or three lords. The Father is neither made nor created nor begotten of anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but is begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeds from the Father and the Son. So there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And within this Trinity, none comes before or after, None is greater or inferior, but all three persons are co-equal and co-eternal, so that in every way, as stated before, all three persons are to be worshipped as one God, and one God worshipped as three persons. Whoever wishes to be saved must have this conviction of the Trinity. I invite our children to come forward for a children's message. actually to the Food Lion grocery store and I'm a member of their MVP club. What that means is I get some discounts on some of the food that I buy there. I get to buy them cheaper than people who aren't part of the club. Sometimes when you have a membership in a club like that there are benefits you get. Can you think of other places you need to have a membership to go to? You'll find out that if you want to the YMCA, yeah, you have to have a membership to go to the YMCA. Most places anyone can go to, but there are some special places where you need to have your membership card or they won't let you in. What's our membership card to get into heaven? By trusting in God. Trusting in God, very good. And what about those people who don't trust in God? They have to go to hell. They don't get to come into God's kingdom with us? No. If I give you this membership card, they'll let you go into the store and use it, but then I don't have it. So if I share my faith in Jesus with you, does that mean I don't get to go into heaven? Oh, so you can give our faith to other people and still have faith yourself and we all get to go to heaven? Well, that's the best kind of membership there is, isn't it? So we know there are people who don't have their faith in Jesus yet, but we can't just give them a card. How do we help them to become members of God's kingdom? How can we help them trust in Jesus? What do you think, Jesus? We have to give them faith, and how do we do that? By telling them the Bible. Tell them about Jesus, right? Do we want everyone to be in God's membership in God's kingdom? Yes. yes. So, whenever we have the chance, let's show people our membership faith. Let's tell them about what we believe in Jesus, and we can share that with them so they can be in heaven too. Let's say a prayer and ask God to help us do that this morning. Can we bow our heads and fold our hands? Dear Lord God, we thank you for giving us membership in your kingdom through faith in Jesus. Help us to share our faith with others so that more and more people can come into your kingdom. In Jesus we pray, amen. Thank you very much. You can go back to your seats.
and we'll continue with our hymn of the day. yours from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The word of God for us to consider this morning is the epistle lesson from Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 14. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is God's word. In the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who together have saved us from sin, dear fellow believers. In a favorite children's book titled, Are You My Mother? A little bird hatches while its mother is away, falls out of its nest, and then begins a journey to try to find its mother. Along the way, that little bird comes to a kitten, a chicken, a dog, a cow, an old car, an airplane, and finally a crane, and each time asks if those things are its mother. Finally, the crane picks him up in its bucket and puts him back in the nest, and then the mother bird comes back, and they all live happily ever after. In analytical terms, I guess you could say that little bird was having an identity crisis. He didn't know who he was or where he fit in the world until he found his mother, and his mother helped explain and nurture him as he grew. People often have identity crises themselves, don't they? Growing up, we may go through a number of phases, trying to find out who we are and how we fit into the, the role that we are in. And it might take a while before we actually find out who we are and we become com comfortable in our own skin, as they say. People sometimes also have spiritual identity crises. They may bounce from one religion to another, from one church to another, from one God to another. They're trying to, to find out where they fit spiritually into God's overall plan for his creation. And it can be a very intimidating thing 
to be spiritually lost and confused. By the grace of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we understand our spiritual identity. As we look at these verses from the letter that Paul wrote to the Romans, we're going to answer that question, do you know who you are? And as we look at these verses, we will realize that we are people who are led by the Spirit, who are loved by the Father, and who are heirs with the Son. In the beginning of this chapter of his letter to the Romans, Paul had drawn a contrast between the believers and the unbelievers. And at the end of that section, he showed what made the difference between them ultimately. He said, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Paul notes that the Christians are different than the unbelievers in that they are led by the Spirit and he has a very profound influence in their lives. God's Word describes us as people who were not led by the Spirit initially. God tells us that we were born in sin and that as people who were born in sin we were members of Satan's family. We were blind to the way of salvation and never would have discovered it on our own. We were actually enemies of God, Paul using the word hostile toward God, wanting nothing to do with him, seeing him as our enemy and running away from him. Paul saw evidence of that in the people in Rome to whom he was ministering. There was evidence that they were not being led by the Spirit, that they were hostile to, toward God, in the blatant immorality and sinfulness that he saw that was commonplace in Rome. I think it's not too difficult for us today to see that same thing in our own culture, in our own setting. Just as one example, consider the language that we now see in TV shows or in movies. Wasn't it just a generation ago that there were seven words you can't use on TV? And now it seems as if anything goes? The immorality of our culture has made what was forbidden before as unacceptable, now acceptable, even though God still hasn't changed his position on it. And that's just one example of the blatant immorality and sinfulness of our world. But that's what happens when you're not led by the Spirit. When you're not being led by the Spirit to God, the devil is leading you away from God. And that's the path that each one of us was on when we came into this world. But we're not on that path any longer. We don't have a spiritual identity crisis any longer because we have been led by the Spirit into a new life of faith and trust in God as our Father and His Son as our Savior. The Holy Spirit has changed our lives from accepting what the world accepts, even though God may not, from accepting sinful lifestyles as being acceptable, if it's the way you want to live your life, to people who ask God what's acceptable and what's allowable. And as people who follow God's will, Jesus himself calls us his disciples. If you are my disciples, you will obey what I command, he says. That identity is indicated in the, the letter to the Romans with the word sons. And now, ladies, I apologize. You're not being excluded. And I apologize again. Back in those times, women could not legally own property. And that's why being a widow was such a, a, a serious thing. Paul speaks about that in Romans and even in the book of Acts. Luke talks about taking care of the widows. So by using this term sons, Paul is not trying to exclude women. That term actually means anyone who is a legal heir. It means anyone who was naturally born into a family, but also anyone who was adopted and became a legal heir in that family. And Paul says that being led by the Holy Spirit, we have become sons of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons, the legal heirs of God, he said. And that says a lot about our Heavenly Father, doesn't it? Why on earth would he want us to be his children? Born in sin, we were his enemies. We had nothing to offer him. We were rebelling against him. 
we were disobeying his commands, there isn't anything that we could possibly have offered him that would make him say, I want that one to be with me. But God sent his Holy Spirit to work through the gospel message to make us his legal heirs, sons and daughters of God and co-heirs with Christ. He didn't send the Holy Spirit to come and force us into labor as his servants or slaves. He didn't conquer us and force us to be his followers. He came to us in love and gently gave us an invitation. Paul said, you did not receive a spirit that makes you slaves again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The relationship that the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit speaks about is that unique bond between parent and child. It's one that can't be duplicated or replicated in all the rest of society. There's a special bond between a parent and his child. And Paul describes that by referring to the Hebrew term Abba. That's what the little Hebrew boys and girls would call their daddies. And daddy is probably the closest English word that we have to translate Abba. A little child who comes to his father doesn't come to him with fear, but whenever he needs something, whenever he wants to know something, he comes and says, Daddy! And that's the type of relationship God, our Heavenly Father, wants us to feel with him. Whenever we need something, whenever we want to share something with him, we should be completely at ease and comfortable coming to him and saying, Dear Father in Heaven, because we didn't receive a spirit of fear. We received a spirit of sonship. The extent of that relationship is indicated in the way that God takes care of us. Remember in your catechism lessons, the explanation to the first article of the Apostles' Creed? I'm not going to put you on the spot and make you recite it with me this morning, but maybe these words sound familiar to us. We say that in the first article we believe in God the Father, and then Martin Luther in the explanation listed uh, a long list of the blessings and benefits we receive. I remember the old version of the catechism, not the updated one. In the old version it said he gave us clothing and shoes, house and home, food and drink, wife and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all that I need to keep my body and life. In other words, what hasn't he given us? And besides giving us everything that we need to stay alive, he went on to say that he guards us against all danger and protects us from all evil. If you think about it, there is not a minute in your life that goes by without God doing something for you. There isn't a, an incident in your life in which God the Heavenly Father was not watching over you and was not taking care of you for the benefit of your eternal good. That's how much he loves you. Why? not because we deserve it or earned it. That simple word grace describes our Heavenly Father's love for us. Undeserved love, completely undeserved. He loves because he loves to love, not because we are so lovable. He loved so much that he made the ultimate sacrifice of sending his one and only Son to die in our place so that we could have membership in his kingdom. He sent Jesus to the earth to pay for every single sin that you and I have committed or will commit. He put all of the responsibility for every one of those sins on his own son's shoulders because he loved us that much. In the gospel lesson you heard that well-known Bible passage spoken to Nicodemus. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And with equal love, the Son accepted his role in God's plan to save us. All that God does for us in our lives here on earth is truly something we should appreciate. We, we take time to thank God for our earthly blessings. And all of these blessings we receive, we acknowledge and recognize are undeserved and often go beyond our expected uh, needs. God blesses us more than he should. And that helps us to see that father-child relationship that God wants us to understand. But we best see it in the fact that God wants to consider us on the same level as his own son. 
And what separated us from being on that same level, of course, was our sin. Now, God didn't want to send his son down to sin to join us. He wanted to remove our sin so we could be considered co-heirs with Christ. And in order to do that, he had to send his son to wash away those sins. And now, because of our faith in Jesus, when God looks through his son at us, he does not see those ugly stains of sin. He says we have been washed completely clean. And through faith, we now have equal status with our Savior Jesus. Paul said, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. As co-heirs with Christ, we can expect the same things to happen to us that happened to Christ. He was raised from the dead and seated at the right hand of God where he lives in all of his glory and he will come back on an unannounced day to take us, his co-heirs, to receive that inheritance of God's kingdom. And we will sit at the right hand of God and receive all of the glory that is now being given to Jesus, our brother. But along the way, God wants us to know, and God is honest with us, that we have to also share in his sufferings. The path for Jesus to glory in heaven led through the cross. And our path to glory in heaven leads through the trials and tribulations of life in a sinful world. And in his father-child love for us, God explains that to us and prepares us for those times. Imagine if God had said nothing about the difficulties that this world will bring into our lives. Imagine that he says, I want you to be my children and believe in Jesus as, my, as your Savior, and, and I'll take you to heaven, and then these horrible things start happening in our lives. Can you imagine what the devil would do with those times? Whispering in your ear, where's that loving Father in heaven? Where's the benefits of being his child? But instead, in love, God said that in order to share in Jesus' glory, we must also share in his sufferings. He was despised and rejected by men, and we may be too because of our faith. He was mistreated and put to death, and we too may be persecuted and suffer because of our faith. The effects of sin are still part of our life. But if we endure those difficult times, we will share in his glory. Our triune God has truly blessed us. God the Father in his love sent Jesus to be our Savior, and then the Holy Spirit came into our life through that gospel message, through the waters of baptism, and made us a part of God's family. We don't have a spiritual identity crisis this morning. We know exactly who we are. We are children of God. That little baby bird had to go through quite a, a few experiences before he finally realized where he fit in life. Thankfully, God has come into our life and made it clear to us that we are his children, sons and daughters, redeemed by Jesus Christ, who will live with him in heaven. I'm not sure of any better way to thank and to praise God than simply through the beautiful words of the doxology. Why don't we join together this morning and sing that hymn, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Again, I'm testing your memory this morning. <laughs> Didn't put it in your bulletin. But let's join together as we close our sermon to thank God, our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here. of God which goes beyond our understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our offerings for the Lord will now be gathered.
stand for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we include a prayer of thanks and joy for Hannah Oller's birthday on June 3rd. I won't share how old she is. She can share that with you if she'd like. 18, her mother says. We also include in our prayers a, a prayer for Janet Austin and her family. She's gone to Michigan to be with her mother who has been put into hospice care, and it appears as though her life on earth will come to a close soon and her new life in heaven will begin. Of course, that's in God's hands. But we ask that the Lord be with her and her family as she experiences these difficulties. We pray. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, one in three and three in one, accept our praise for our creation, redemption, and sanctification. Heavenly Father, author of our creation, we give you thanks for permitting us to live in your beautiful world. For the lofty skies, the warmth and energy of the sun, summer and winter, and day and night, we give you thanks. For the evidence of your power, which is revealed in towering mountain peaks, ocean tides, the lightning of a storm, and the mighty rushing winds, we give you thanks. For your inestimable love, which provides for all our needs, and most of all, your redemption of the world by our Lord and Savior Jesus, we give you thanks. O Jesus Christ, author and finisher of our faith, for redeeming us from the power of Satan, for freeing us from the slavery of sin, and for opening the gates of everlasting life, accept our sincere gratitude for showing us how to live with people, for suffering and dying for us, for giving our lives a purpose by commissioning us to be your witnesses, accept our sincere gratitude. O Holy Spirit, source of our faith, for calling us by the gospel, for enlightening us with your gifts, for establishing the Christian church on earth, for keeping us in the one true faith, we give you thanks. O oh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the midst of all your blessings, we have been guilty of abusing your gifts. We've been wasteful of your created resources. we failed to carry out our, your great commission. For all of this, forgive us, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you as you have commanded us to do, and as your children do so in complete trust and faith, asking that you bless the family of Janet Austin and her mother, her life is certainly in your hands, and you always do what is best for your people. You've given her her membership card to heaven through the gospel message and through baptism. You've kept her in her faith, and now that faith is so important to her as her time on earth seemingly draws to a close. Be with her and her family and keep them strong and close to you. Pour out an extra measure of your love on them, that they may constantly lean on you and find peace in knowing that in all things you do what is best for your children. Remind them of that beautiful spiritual family reunion that will take place in the kingdom of heaven on the day when you choose. Heavenly Father, we also thank you for the 18 years of blessings that you have given to Anna Ollers. We pray that you will continue to be with her and nurture her with your word, that gospel message of power, so that she never experiences a spiritual identity crisis. We thank you for all of the earthly blessings, but especially for bringing her to her Savior, Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Continue to be with her and bless her here on earth and finally in your kingdom above. All of these things we ask, trusting in your holy name and coming to you in the name of Jesus, in whose name we also join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the order for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In perfect unity with his Son and the Holy Spirit, he is the source, guide, and goal for our lives now and always. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he also took the cup gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me and the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. invited to come forward for the sacrament of the altar. <clears throat> this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace, and your sins are forgiven.
for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Taking this is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Forgiven in death for your sins. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he gave unto death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. blood of your Savior, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Amen. Stand and we'll join in the thanksgiving beginning with the song of Simeon. Yes. 
give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love by your Spirit. Help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we close with our final hymn verse. Good morning to everybody. Just a couple notes from our schedule for the week. Tomorrow is our Wings in the Word men's Bible study at 6.30. Study guides are out on the table for you. And next Sunday we will continue our regular worship schedule with 9.30 Church. We are starting our summer Sunday school, is that correct? Next Sunday, June 7th. So uh, we will continue through the summer months to have Sunday school for the children at the same time as our adult Bible classes. Uh, looking ahead um, for the summer, we're planning to do something different this year. Uh, once a month, we're going to have a, a church family barbecue at 6.30 on a Wednesday night. And that will be followed by a, a small devotion. What we're going to do is show you some different things you can do for home devotions and teach you how to do those. And hopefully that will carry through once the summer has completed. Our first one, if you notice, in the upcoming events is scheduled for June 24th going to kind of be a potluck uh, situation. We will provide the, the protein, the meats for you, and just uh, try to continue to have some fellowship and some faith building through the summer months. Are there any other announcements anyone else would like to make today? Yes, Scott. Just to piggyback on the comment about summer Sunday school, so if we have, uh, we need some volunteers and helpers to get us through that program for the next couple months. So if you're interested in that, uh, now this is different than the kids' church because I've been I've been asking people to help with that, that as well. So if you're available and interested uh, and can help out at even a little, uh, just a little bit, let me know and we'll get you plugged in so we can manage through that summer Sunday school. And that will be for uh, lower elementary down through preschool, kind of all in one group. Okay, all one in class, not not separate classes. Okay, any other announcements? We do have our potluck dinner today. I can smell it cooking and thank everybody who brought food. I hope you can all stay and share with us. Before we do that, we'll nourish our souls with uh, Sunday school and Bible class. The ladies uh, do have Bible class in the conference room or here in the church, I will conduct a Bible class for the adults. Children, you have your separate rooms to go to. Those are our announcements for today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you perhaps through the week, but uh, especially again next Sunday.